Hello guys welcome to Info Nitty, this is your host Mark so today's our topic is about data. Without any further delay let's get started. Data is essentially information that can be processed, analyzed, and used for a variety of purposes. It can take many forms, such as numbers, words, images, or even sounds. Data is an important resource in many fields, including business, science, technology, and healthcare. It allows organizations and individuals to make informed decisions, test hypotheses, and solve problems. For example, a company might use data to analyze customer behavior and preferences in order to improve its products or services. A scientist might use data to confirm or refute a theory. Data can be collected through a variety of methods, including surveys, experiments, and observations. It can be stored in databases or other data storage systems, and it can be analyzed using statistical analysis, machine learning algorithms, or other tools. In recent years, the amount of data being generated and collected has exploded, thanks to the proliferation of digital devices and the Internet. This trend, known as big data, has led to the development of new technologies and techniques for storing, managing, and analyzing data. Overall, data plays a crucial role in modern society, enabling us to make better decisions, improve processes, and drive innovation. There are several types of data that can be collected and analyzed, each with its own characteristics and uses. Here are a few examples. Structured data. Structured data is organized in a predefined format, typically in a table or spreadsheet. It is easy to search, sort, and analyze, and it is often stored in a database. Examples of structured data include customer records, financial transactions, and inventory lists. Unstructured data. Unstructured data does not have a predefined format, and it is often harder to analyze and interpret. It can include text documents, emails, social media posts, and other types of free-form content. Semi-structured data. Semi-structured data is a hybrid of structured and unstructured data. It has some predefined elements, but also has some free-form content. Examples include XML documents and JSON files. Numerical data. Numerical data is data that is expressed as numbers, such as measurements, counts, or monetary values. It can be further divided into discrete data, which can only take on certain values, example the number of students in a class, and continuous data, which can take on any value within a certain range, example the weight of an object. Categorical data, categorical data is data that is divided into categories or groups. It can be further divided into ordinal data, which has categories that have a natural order, example small, medium, large, and nominal data, which has categories that do not have an inherent order, example colors. Qualitative data, qualitative data is non-numeric data that describes qualities or characteristics. It can include text, images, or other types of data that cannot be easily quantified. These are just a few examples of the types of data that can be collected and analyzed. It is important to understand the different types of data and how they can be used in order to effectively collect, store, and analyze data. Data collection refers to the process of gathering information or data for a specific purpose. There are several methods that can be used to collect data, including Surveys Surveys are one of the most common methods for collecting data. They can be conducted online, by phone, or in person, and they typically involve asking a series of questions to a group of people. Surveys can be used to gather information about attitudes, beliefs, behaviors, or other characteristics. Experiments Experiments are a method of collecting data that involves manipulating one or more variables in a controlled environment and measuring the effects on other variables. Experiments can be used to test hypotheses or answer research questions. Observations Observations involve collecting data by watching and recording what happens in a natural setting. Observations can be conducted in person or remotely, using tools such as cameras or sensors. Interviews Interviews involve collecting data through one-on-one -on -one or group discussions with individuals. Interviews can be conducted in person, by phone, or online, and they can be structured, following a predetermined set of questions, or unstructured, allowing for more open-ended conversation. Focus groups Focus groups involve collecting data through group discussions with a small, diverse group of people. Focus groups are typically used to gather opinions or insights on a particular topic or product. Case studies, case studies involve collecting data through in-depth analysis of a single individual, group, or organization. 
Case studies are often used to examine unique or unusual situations or to explore a specific issue in depth. There are many other methods for collecting data, and the best method will depend on the specific goals and resources of the research project. It is important to carefully plan and execute the data collection process in order to ensure that the data collected is accurate and representative of the population being studied. Data storage refers to the process of saving and organizing data for later use. There are many options for storing data, including Local storage Local storage refers to data that is stored on a device that is physically located near the user, such as a hard drive or flash drive. Local storage is fast and easy to access, but it is limited by the capacity of the device and is vulnerable to physical damage or theft. Cloud storage Cloud storage refers to data that is stored on remote servers that are accessed over the Internet. Cloud storage allows users to access their data from any device with an Internet connection, and it typically offers much larger storage capacity than local storage. However, it can be slower to access and may be vulnerable to Internet outages or cyber attacks. Databases Databases are specialized systems for storing and organizing structured data, such as customer records or financial transactions. Databases can be used to store large amounts of data and allow for fast and efficient searches and queries. Data warehouses Data warehouses are large-scale systems for storing and analyzing data from multiple sources. They are designed to support complex queries and provide fast access to large volumes of data. Big data platforms Big data platforms are specialized systems for storing and processing very large volumes of data, often in the petabyte or exabyte range. They use distributed computing systems to process and analyze data in real-time or near-real-time. The choice of data storage method will depend on the specific needs and resources of the organization or individual. It is important to carefully consider factors such as storage capacity, access speed, security, and cost when deciding how to store data. Data analysis is the process of examining, transforming, and modeling data in order to discover useful insights and information. It is a critical step in the data science process, and it can be used to answer research questions, confirm or refute hypotheses, identify patterns and trends, and make predictions. There are many techniques and tools that can be used for data analysis, depending on the type and complexity of the data being analyzed. Some common methods include Descriptive statistics Descriptive statistics involve summarizing and describing the main characteristics of a data set. This can be done using measures such as mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation. Exploratory data analysis, EDA EDA involves examining and visualizing data in order to understand its structure and patterns. It is often the first step in the data analysis process and can be done using tools such as plots, histograms, and scatter plots. Statistical analysis, Statistical analysis involves using statistical methods to test hypotheses and draw conclusions about a data set. It can be used to estimate the relationships between variables, predict future outcomes, or identify trends and patterns. Machine learning Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that involves training algorithms to analyze and learn from data. Machine learning algorithms can be used to identify patterns and make predictions based on large volumes of data. Data visualization Data visualization involves representing data in graphical or visual form, such as charts, graphs, or maps. It can help to make complex data more understandable and can be used to highlight trends and patterns. Data analysis is an iterative process, and it often involves multiple steps and techniques. It is important to carefully plan and execute the data analysis process in order to ensure that the insights and conclusions drawn from the data are accurate and reliable. Data visualization is the process of representing data in graphical or visual form, such as charts, graphs, or maps. It is a powerful tool for making complex data more understandable and for highlighting trends and patterns. There are many types of data visualization tools and techniques, and the best one to use will depend on the specific goals and characteristics of the data being visualized. Some common types of data visualization include Bar charts Bar charts are used to compare data points across categories. They consist of bars of different lengths, with the length representing the size of the data point. Line charts Line charts are used to track changes over time. They consist of a series of connected dots or points, with the position of each point representing the value of the data point at a specific time. Pie charts Pie charts are used to show the proportions or percentages of different data points in relation to the whole. 
They consist of a circular pie that is divided into slices, with each slice representing a different data point. Scatter plots. Scatter plots are used to show the relationship between two or more variables. They consist of a series of dots, with the position of each dot representing the values of the variables for a specific data point. Maps. Maps are used to show data geographically. They can be used to represent data points, such as the location of businesses or the distribution of a population, or to show data values, such as the temperature or rainfall in different areas. Data visualization can be a powerful tool for making data more understandable and for communicating information effectively. It is important to carefully consider the goals and audience of the visualization and to choose the appropriate type of visualization based on the characteristics of the data being visualized. Data privacy and security refer to the measures that are taken to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. These measures are important because data is a valuable resource that can be used for a variety of purposes, and it is vulnerable to a range of threats, such as cyber attacks, data breaches, and unauthorized access or use. There are several measures that can be taken to protect data privacy and security, including Encryption Encryption involves converting data into a code that can only be accessed by someone with the proper decryption key. Encryption can protect data in transit such as when it is being transmitted over the internet, or at rest, such as when it is stored on a device or in a database. Access controls, access controls involve limiting who can access data and what actions they can perform on it. This can be done through the use of user accounts, permissions, and authentication methods, such as passwords or biometric authentication. Network security, network security involves protecting data as it is transmitted over a network, such as the internet. This can be done through the use of firewalls, intrusion detection and prevention systems, and virtual private networks, VPNs. Physical security, physical security involves protecting data from physical threats, such as theft or damage. This can be done through the use of security cameras, access controls, and secure storage facilities. Data backup and recovery, Data backup and recovery involves creating copies of data and storing them in a separate location in case the original data is lost or corrupted. This can help to ensure that data is available in the event of a disaster or other catastrophic event. Data privacy and security are important considerations for individuals, organizations, and governments. It is important to carefully plan and implement measures to protect data in order to ensure that it is not lost, compromised, or misused. In conclusion, Data is a valuable resource that can be used to make informed decisions, test hypotheses, and solve problems. It can be collected through a variety of methods, including surveys, experiments, and observations, and it can be stored in a range of systems, including local storage, cloud storage, databases, and data warehouses. Data analysis is the process of examining, transforming, and modeling data in order to discover useful insights and information, and data visualization is the process of representing data in graphical or visual form in order to make it more understandable and to highlight trends and patterns. Data privacy and security are critical considerations that involve protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data from a range of threats. Overall, data plays a crucial role in modern society, enabling us to make better decisions, improve processes, and drive innovation.